scalar overview. Here in this session, we shall discuss different important features and advantages of Scala programming. We know that Scala is a general purpose language. Using this Scala, we can develop multiple different applications and especially for concurrent applications and distributed applications. As a result of that, in big data, in big data oriented applications, Scala programming is playing a very vital role. James Gosling was the creator of Java. The comment was made by James Gosling was that if he has been asked to select the next language, next programming language other than Java, he would be selecting this Scala language. So that is very interesting. And also the, the creator of Groovy that is James Strachan, he, is, he has made one very interesting comment that he made this comment that he, if he would get this uh, programming in Scala book in the year 2003, he would never had uh, gone for the development of Groovy. There is another, another very important comment we got from your Charles Nutter who was a co-developer of our JRuby. He has told that Java is, the Scala is the replacement of Java. So that's why we are getting multiple different comments from different renowned persons regarding this Scala programming. So Scala is getting more and more popular nowadays. And as a trainer, as a developers from the testers, we are getting this, this comment that this Scala is nothing but a better Java. So that's why this particular tutorial will be discussing the overview of Scala, where we will be discussing multiple different points in this uh, respective topic. So here we have listed some features of Scala. If you go on counting, we have listed only 15 such features, but obviously we can consider more than this list. Scala nowadays, as I've told you, that is getting more and more popularity and applicability. You can consider Twitter, you can consider your LinkedIn, Coursera, Foursquare. So they have transformed, they have transformed and developed most of their major part of their code base onto the Scala. So that's why Scala is getting more and more popular. So in this particular tutorial, we'll be implementing our uh, Scala code in two different environments. One using the IDE, where we'll be writing a complete code and then we shall go for the uh, compilation and then execution. And also we'll be using very top level interface that is the shell, the shell interface that is known as REPL, that is a read, eval, print, loop. So there also in a very interactive way, we can execute line by line in the, in the shell environment. So let, must, let me discuss all these features one by one. So the first feature we are considering that is a type inference. Now question is coming in mind, what is type inference? So this is our type inference. So type inference means Scala automatically detects or infers an expression's data type fully or partially. In the REPL environment, that is our read, eval, print, loop environment, that is a, in the shell environment, we have written this particular assignment statement, that is a val my var 1 is equal to 10. Here you see we did not mention the data type of my var 1 explicitly, but due to the presence of the feature, that is a type inference in Scala. So now it has been interpreted as it is of the type. Uh, it is of the type int and getting the value 10 here. Just change the respective initialization value. So here we have written val that is a my var 2 is equal to 10.51. So whenever I am assigning 10.51, irrespective of the fact that I have been mentioned the data type for my var 1, so my var 1 is getting inferred as of the type double and has got initialized with the value 10.51. So this property is known as type inference. We know that in case of val, whenever we are defining one variable, in case of val, whenever writing val my var 1, that means it is getting defined as immutable uh, variable, that means the value of the variable cannot be changed. Now the next property we are going to discuss is known as singleton object. So singleton object instead of static variables and methods. In our Scala, there is no keyword called static. So using this singleton object, we can, we can simulate the environment of static. That is, let us consider object, my object. So here we have defined one singleton object, 
with this keyword object. Just remember this object is having all the letters are in the lower case. So, here you have defined one function that is our def main arcs colon array strings colon unit is equal to this is the respective code here. So, this very line is defining our main function. In our, in our Java programming, we used to write the main function having the default prototype like, like public static void main string args. So, here also we, have, we are going to write the same but in the Scala syntax. So, as a static keyword is not there present in Scala, so that is why we have written this, we have defined this main function under this object my object and this my object is a singleton object. So, def means define, main is the name of the function, it is having the args, there is a argument name, that is the argument name we are having this args, which is of the type array of type string and which returns void. So, here unit denotes and nothing, that is the void here and which is equal to which is having this respective body, that is a print hello world. So, hello world is a string must be enclosed within double quotes. So, this is our singleton object. So, that is one of the features of this Scala programming. The next feature we are going to discuss is known as immutability. So, declaration of a variable in Scala, it is immutable by default. So, the, this property of Scala helps us with the concurrency control and also to develop applications in the distributed environment. Whenever you define one variable, that is that let us suppose we are writing this val my var1 is equal to 10, this my var1 is becoming uh, one immutable uh, variable that means the value of this my var1 cannot be changed, cannot be altered. So, this particular property that is the immutability, this property of Scala helps us to develop applications which are capable to handle concurrency and also capable to work in the distributed environment. Next one, the property is known as lazy evaluation. If declared lazy using the lazy keyword, Scala delays complex computation with evaluating an expression until it is absolutely needed. So, that means whenever we are defining one variable with the lazy keyword, then the variable that will be evaluated whenever it is required, not prior to that. So, only on the demand, the variable will be evaluated. So, just consider this example here. So, lazy val my images is equal to get images method. So, here you can find that this particular my images, this particular variable will be evaluated as when required, not in prior because we have having the preceded this keyword that is lazy. So, that is why lazy evaluation is one of the features of Scala programming. So, the next property we are discussing that is our case classes and pattern matching. So, a regular class that is immutable by default and is decomposable via pattern matching is a case class. And while writing a case class, the case class must be preceded with this uh, respective keyword that is a case and class. And its parameters are public and immutable by default. So, let us go for one example to show you that case class student. So, here you see we have written this case class. While writing this case class, we are supposed to mention these keywords. So, case class student. So, that is a respective class name. It is having say role of the type int name of the type string and address of the type string. So, three arguments are there, three uh, respective parameters are there. So, role of the type int name of the type string and address of the type string. So, now we are defining val student1 is equal to student and for against the role we are passing 101 against name we are passing Anirban and against address we are passing Kolkata. So, now what will happen if you go for print student 1 dot role comma student 1 dot name comma student 1 dot address then it will print 101 Anirban and Kolkata respectively. So, that is the utility of this case class in our Scala programming. Now, in case of pattern matching, so here we are having this import Scala util dot random because we will be using this random the respective class we will be using here. So, val x which is of the type int is equal to random dot next int and the range is 10. So, now x match. So, now we can see replacing multiple if else statements we can use this respective match here. So, case 0 when this x will have the value 0 then the respective 0 will be there. 
when the case 1 when the x will have the value 1 then 1 otherwise so here we have mentioned underscore otherwise will be uh, will be having the string many so in this way we are doing this pattern matching depending upon the value of x the respective string will be selected so this is one of the features of scala that is the case classes and pattern matching next one next property is known as concurrency control so the actor model from scala's standard library lets us implement concurrency in the code and scala also has a platform or tool that is akka akka which is a separate open source framework for actor based concurrency so in case of concurrency or in case of concurrent programming scala is very much suitable and it is required to build powerful reactive concurrent and distributed applications in java and also in scala so that feature is known as that is a concurrency control so in case of distributed environments multiple transactions will be there multiple threads will get executed so concurrency control is very much required in those applications and scala is very much suitable for those applications development we're having the string interpolation so according to the official string interpolation documentation any arbitrary expression can be embedded in dollar then within curly braces so here we can put any kind of expression the expression will be evaluated and the value will be obtained so as example consider this one so age next year is equal to age plus one here you see we are having one expression here let us suppose initially the value of age is 40 so 40 plus 1 that is 41 so here we are having this dollar and then within curly braces we have written the respective expression so that is 40 plus 1 here and it will be treated as a string it will be treated as a string so now in this way the age next year is equal to colon 41 will get printed when this particular code will be having its execution so just consider this so print ln s that means the string so you are 30 years old so in that case you see this age double equal to 33 so now here we are checking whether this age is equal to 33 or not so it returns either true or false depending upon the current value of age and here you see it has been put within the curly braces preceded by this dollar so this expression will be evaluated it will return either true or false and that will be treated as a string and that then you your you are 33 years old true or false will come when this code will get executed so this is known as string interpolation next our next property is our high order functions such functions can return another functions or take it as a parameter so scala makes it possible by treating its functions as the first class citizen so in in this particular case a function can take one function as input argument a function can return a function as well let us see one example here so val all salaries so here we have defined one sequence so sequence is something like this 10,000 20,000 and 30,000 so val double cell is equal to x which is of the type int and here you see it is just having the value x star 2 so val increase salaries is equal to all salaries dot map what is the all salaries all salaries is this particular sequence all salaries dot map double cell so double cell is this one so increase salaries will be will produce one list in the output that is to 20,000 40,000 60,000 which are nothing but the double of this 10,000 20,000 and 30,000 accordingly here this map is a high order functions we have used in this example so the property is known as high order functions next property we are going to discuss is trait a trait is a type holding certain fields and methods we define traits using the trait keyword and we can consider it like a partially implemented interface we had the concept of interface in our java so here this particular partially implemented interface will be treated as a trait in our scala programming so trait my trait so here we are defining one method there is a my method argument one of the type string argument will be of the type integer and which returns void or nothing so in this way we are having this partially implemented interfaces which will be called as trait in our scala programming 
a class can a class can implement multiple threads as when required next one is the rich set of collections so this color library has a huge set of collections with classes and threads to help collect data into an immutable or a mutable collections so there are so many different collections are there in our scala programming and the scala.collection.immutable and scala.collection.mutable packages hold all the immutable and mutable collections respectively so these are the two packages which are holding all the all the respective immutable and mutable collections which are being used in our scala code so rich set of collections so the next property we are going to discuss is a functional programming or functional language so scala is a functional language and it and treats it functions as first class citizens it will let us create high order functions which we discussed earlier functional programming supports partially applied functions carrying support for first class functions and closures and type inference immutability lazy evaluation pattern matching and the nested functions etc so some of the features we have already discussed and other features will be discussing in our throughout this tutorial will be discussing this trade this cutting this respective closures the nested functions all these things will be discussing and now this is known as a functional programming because functional programming requires will have this particular properties and scala supports all of them and that's why it is called here the main important statement whatever has been written here is the functions as first class citizens and this first class citizens we are having a separate example just watch that one we will be discussing why these functions are called as first class citizens next one is our object oriented so scala is object oriented while also being functional in it every value is an object there are three major features in object oriented programming they are encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism encapsulation refers to the creation of self content modules that bind processing functions to the data next property is very important that is scala is an object oriented language so scala is object oriented while also being functional language and it is uh, every value is an object in scala so every each and every value is nothing but an object there are three major features in object oriented programming then they are nothing but encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism and encapsulation refers to the creation of self content modules that bind processing functions to the data so here we are having the data that is the variables will be defining which will be containing data and set of methods which will decide what are the functions that you can carry out on the data and that is known as the encapsulation so in case of scala one of the most important features is that it is object oriented programming language next one is the statically typed so statically typed programming languages do type checking the process of verifying and enforcing the constants of types at compile time as opposed to the run time so all the variable types will be defined during the compilation during the compile time not during the run time and that is that's why these variables are known as statically typed variables and dynamically type programming languages do type checking at the run time as opposed to the compile time and that will be known as the dynamically type variables but this scala supports statically type variable that means all the variables will have their data types defined during the compilation time we are having next one is extensibility for domain specific applications we need domain specific language extensions scala delivers a combination of language mechanisms overall it makes to it easy to smoothly add new language constructs as libraries and constructs like the implicit classes and string interpolation help us to do this and we don't need meta programming like features like our macros so if we if we develop some applications with some special type of features we can go for the extension extensibility features of scala can be used there and we can import certain different libraries in our scala and you can make the application 
on the uh, according to the domain specific. So that is why the property is known as extensibility. The next property is the that is the Scala runs on JVM. The syntax of Scala is very much alike to Java and that is why it is getting more and more popularity. So, Scala's compile converts the source into Java bytecode that runs on the JVM that is a Java virtual machine and you know that whenever we are having the bytecode format and that is be making the language platform independent. So, these are the features which we have discussed in this respective uh, series of points. There is a 15 points we have discussed and they are the prime features of Scala. So, let us discuss two questions. The first question is that what is Scala and why Scala is the first choice of application developers. I think it is better let us go for some more discussion and in this particular session with some demonstration. So, here is the discussion. Scala overview. Scala short for scalable language is a hybrid functional programming language and it was created by Martin Odersky. Scala smoothly integrates the features of object oriented and as well as the functional languages. Scala is actually compiled to run on the Java virtual machine that is JVM. Many existing companies who depend on Java for business critical applications are turning to Scala to boost their development productivity, applications scalability and overall reliability. And we know that Scala is getting popular day by day and why Scala is the first choice of application developers. So that is the question if we raise these questions. So we are here we are going to discuss some definite points. The first point is Scala is fully object oriented. So that means Scala is a pure object oriented language in the sense that every value is an object and types and behavior of objects are described by classes and traits and which will be discussed in our next videos detailing about this concept. And classes are extended by subclassing and a flexible mixing based composition mechanism as a clean replacement for multiple inheritance. So, next point we want to discuss is that Scala is functional that is very important point. So, Scala is also functional language in the sense that every function is a value and every value is an object. So, ultimately every function is an object. We are having a separate chapter on this functions and procedures and methods. So, you can watch that one also. Scala provides a lightweight syntax for defining anonymous functions. It supports higher order functions. It allows functions to be nested and supports current functions and this concept we shall be discussing later also. So, Scala is st statically typed. So, that is a very important one that is a Scala is statically typed. So, Scala unlike some other uh, statically typed languages, so here we are having say C, Pascal, Rust, etc. does not expect we to provide redundant type information. We do not have to specify a type in most cases and we certainly do not have to repeat it again. So, in case of statically typed languages, the type of a variable will be determined during the compilation phase not during the runtime of the application. Next one is Java runs on the JVM. So, Scala is compiled into Java bytecode which is ex executed by the Java virtual machine or JVM. This means that Scala and Java have a common runtime platform and we can easily move from Java to Scala also. The Scala compiler compiles our Scala code into Java bytecode which can then be executed by the Scala command. The Scala command is similar to the Java command in that it executes our code a, a compiled Java I compiled the Scala code here. So, that means in case of Scala compiler it, it compiles our Scala code into Java bytecode and which then get executed by the Scala command. The Scala command is similar to the Java command. 
because you know that in case of Java program execution, at first we do the Java C, we use the Java C application for the Java to, uh, to convert that Java code to the respective bytecode form. And then for the execution of the Java bytecode, we usually issue the command Java to execute it. So, but in case of uh, Scala, we'll be using the Scala C. So that very application to convert this Scala code to the bytecode format and later Scala command will be used and that will execute our compiled Scala code. So that is the main concept here. Next one is that well, Scala can execute Java code also. So Scala enables us to use all the classes of the Java SDK and also our own custom Java classes or our favorite Java open source projects. Next point is Scala can do concurrent and synchronized processing. So Scala allows us to express general programming pattern in an effective way. It reduces the number of lines and helps the programmer to code in a type safe way. It allows us to write codes in an immutable manner and which makes it easy to apply concurrency and parallelism that is a synchronization there is a synchronize next one is what is the difference between Scala and the Java so Scala versus Java so Scala has a set of features that completely different from Java and some of these are all types are objects type inference nested functions functions are objects and domain specific language DSL support, threads, closures and concurrency support inspired by Erlang. So regarding these aspects, we will be having a separate video for that for the detailed discussion. So the last feature is the Scala web frameworks. Scala is being used everywhere and importantly in enterprise web applications. And you can check a few of the most popular Scala web frameworks and they are the, the Lipt framework, the Play framework and the Bowler framework. So these are the different features for which Scala has become so popular nowadays. Actually, frankly speaking, uh, if you are earnestly looking for a technique to simplify your code for object oriented programming projects, but want to stick to functional programming, Scala is one of the most excellent choices you can opt for. And whether you work with C and C++ Java, Scala based big data programming frameworks widely reversed for its high speed and expressiveness. With a cleaner and simpler design and syntax, Scala runs successfully on JVM and brings you the efficient ways of handling the huge data sets and that's why in different big data related applications scholars scala programming language is getting used widely and it offers a smoother integration of object oriented and functional languages whatever you have discussed right now which simulates java programmers to be more concise as well as productive and scala programming minimizes the burden of coders by reducing the code snippets to two or three times when compares with the other application platforms such as say Java, C and others. So that's why the code is getting more concise here. One of the distinguished advantages of using Scala in this big data arena is that it lets software architects adhere to their traditional functional programming patterns but with a modern twist of improved computing speed, lesser code writing and powerful and flexible concepts and expressions. And here in this way, we have concluded the overview of this Scala programming language. Thanks for watching this video.